Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my capstone presentation. My name is Selena Shea, and I will be talking about air quality index and environmental policy making. My internship this past summer at EPA Region 10 led me to explore the intersection between air pollution, data, and policy. As I was doing research, I became interested in air quality index, which is well known, but not always used. This was especially relevant this past summer due to the wildfires on the West Coast. Taking a step back, indices are great for summarizing complex information into simple reference values. In this case, Air Quality Index summarizes five common pollutants monitored under the Clean Air Act into one single value. The air quality is monitored and reported throughout the U.S., but it is often overlooked in government and individual decision. For my research, I looked into the following two questions. What features of environmental indices are useful for policymaking, and how can those qualities be applied to the air quality index? My research began with my internship at EPA Region 10. To explain, industrial permitting under the Clean Air Act requires a cost-benefit analysis of air pollution control technology to determine which technology are economically feasible to reduce pollution in those facilities. There are no standardized regulations for how the analysis is performed or determined, only guidelines. Additionally, permitting decisions are done mostly by state and local governments and overseen by the EPA. Here is a figure taken from the RBLC, which is EPA's database for air permits. As you can see, none of the cost data is filled out, and this is the case for all 82 of the permitting actions that I looked at this summer. My task was to contact state and permit engineers to and search public records to see what kinds of cost information was available to them while approving permits. In this figure here in the center, less than a quarter of the permitting actions I looked at had some kind of cost information that was either sent to me or I was able to find online. This illustrates how difficult it can be to implement policies on a large scale without clear and easily defined rules. There are opportunities here for a comprehensive database that allows permit engineers to search and compare previous permits to inform decisions on future permitting actions. Now, looking more closely at my research question, I was able to identify four features of useful environmental indices. First, the index should be easy to understand and informative. Two examples of this would be the daily weather and the fire hazard signs that are often found at the entrances of parks and trails. The air quality index does well in this because it illustrates the six levels of health risks for various groups of people along with suggestions for altering personal behavior if needed. Next is a feature is uh, that the index should address one or more of the three pillars of sustainability, which are social, economy, and environment. One example of this would be the Human Development Index, which looks at the gross national income, life expectancy, and literature rate. This is proposed as a more progressive and accurate depiction of a country's progress rather than the traditional GDP. Speaking of GDP, it is an excellent demonstration of the next feature, which is that data should be comparable. GDP is often used to illustrate a country's progress and is often has a competitive edge to it. So when you're able to rank regions, it makes people and especially politicians more likely to focus on the issue. Lastly, the index should illustrate environmental impacts. Of course, this applies more to environmental indices, but a great example of this would be the carbon footprint test. In the test, you answer a series of questions based on your lifestyle and 
the end result is the number of Earths necessary to sustain that lifestyle. This sort of visual impact can leave an everlasting effect on the audience. To wrap this up, I want to talk about two things. First, air quality index is an excellent indicator and is correlated to many public health uh, issues associated with air pollution. So it could replace many of the specific pollutant levels that are often found in government reports. The EPA has also added new features like forecasting of wildfire risks to the Air Now website, which is used for reporting air quality index to make this more useful. Secondly, there's been a lot of recent developments on large environmental data management systems, such as the one shown below. This is the Puget Sound Partnership Vital Signs Dashboard, which monitors environmental health through various ecological health social wellness measurements such as water quality, of course, air quality, and others to provide a more comprehensive picture of Puget Sound Health. I just want to end by saying that awareness of air quality index should start at the individual level. If people care about values, about the values, any issue that arise would be more likely to end up in the policy agenda. I want to give a special thanks to my supervisor, Zach Hedgepeth, for the opportunity, my faculty advisor, Timothy Larson, for the guidance, my friends, family, and POE cohort for the support. Thank you.